Hi guys, James here from Plumber Parts Arcadic UK. Hotly anticipated video that I know a lot of you have been asking for, and I finally got around to sort of getting all my stuff together, to having a bit of a van clear out, and I thought this is the time to do it. So today we're going to be looking at the power tools that I use every day as a plumber. I'm not going to talk specifically about the brand that I'm using, I think you're going to find that's pretty obvious, but the actual tool and why I've got them and what I'm using them for. Almost every tool, every adapter, every battery, every drill, every drill bit, you will be able to find on our Amazon shop front as well. I've left links to that below. So if you're interested in getting any of the stuff, go over to our shop front and waste more money on tools, which let's face it, like I've said many times, is not a waste of money, is it? No. Also guys, if you'd be oh so kind as to subscribe, comment below as to the tools that you guys have and that you like, and also hit that like button as well. Let's get on with the video, and remember everybody, don't tag. 300 plus videos on plumbing. <laughs> right, so let's get the old table out. Number one, if I can find this table and put it online for you to buy, it is the best work table you can get. You can slip it underneath like a back part of the van. It goes in really easily. I've had it for years. As you can see, I've painted weights on it in the past, but there we go. Two flicks like that, boom, you've got yourself a table to work on. So let's have a look and a talk and a chat together about the tools that I use. So here we go, number one. Drill, basically, impact driver. Let's have a look. You might think, why the hell has he got two Makita impact drivers? Well, simple reason, I lost one, couldn't find it, bought another one, and as soon as I bought the new one, guess what, the old one turned up. So this one tends to have just a standard crosshead bit in it. Um, and that one is handy. I mean, you can use it on posi screws. Just jab it in there and hold it, push real hard and it'll be okay. Um, but I usually use this for like taking dry lining out. Um, you know, I do plumbing, but I'm doing a lot of building work on my own house. And often a lot of the, the plumbing work that I do for my clients as well involves like getting things fixed for them, um, putting up new ceilings, all the leaks that I have, uh, and all that sort of stuff. This is the main one, this goes on my tool belt. I actually have a carpenter's apron for a tool belt because I like to have that for first fixing, and this hangs on it with a nice little belt clip on the side just fine. Um, another thing as well, and this is definitely on the shop, uh, I've got an angle bit on here. This gets you out of so much poo. Uh, but also, when it is locked back, ooh, it never comes off accidentally, so it'll always stay really straight and do a good job for you. I, I think impact drivers, for me, are the best way. I, they get longer screws in quicker. They're better than just drill drivers, um, or they are, in my opinion. Obviously, you've got the little light on there. We've all got that now. And a little uh, battery bit on there as well, just so you know what your batteries are on. And you also get them on the back. Buy genuine batteries. Don't go online and buy cheapy ones off eBay or whatever. Make sure the ones you're getting are genuine because they do last a lot longer. Also, um, if you're in the Makita land, try and get five amp hour batteries. Think this one here, this is a four amp hour. This one here is an old school one. I've had this yonks. This is a three amp hour. But I've got about four or five five amp hour ones. I've probably got about overall I don't know, 15 batteries, like knocking about. Um, you also might wonder why some of them have got gaffer tape around them. That's because my batteries always get nicked on site. I haven't done it to this one yet, but I usually wrap gaffer tape around them so the uh, chippies don't nick them because they've got all the same tools as me, but there we go. So then next up, I've got my uh, just drill driver, really. I've actually also got another one. Uh, the less good one, where is it? Where are you? This is the brushless motor one, which is lovely. I mean, it does the job. It's a lot lighter. Uh, but it just doesn't have the oomph and the power of this one here. And I think this one, this has got a five amp hour battery on it. So it's got a metal breech on it, one and two speed, just normal sort of stuff. Uh, and then I suppose something that you may or may not know about if you're coming here for the first time learning about tools and what they do, uh, you have a screw speed, a drill speed and a hammer. Um, screw is where you'll start to use the actual torque setting. So see that as how tight you want that screw to be. If you want it really, really tight, you have a high setting number. And if you have it on really, really low, it will just about just almost get it in. But after a while, guys, you don't really use the torque setting thing. You just get used to the feel of your tool. <laughs> the feel of your tool, baby. So yeah, it just reminds me of train sets, like Hornby train sets when I was a kid. Hell lovely. And then I've got my, uh, like this is like the backup one. They both effectively do the same job. The one thing about the brushless motors is um, they tend to use less battery and they're obviously a bit quieter. So you've got, and then, well, they're a bit, apparently they're a bit quieter. 
don't know if they are, but there we go. So we've got my impact drivers getting stuff in. We've got the drills. Let's just move this camera shot back a bit so you can see more of the table. Yeah, so that's what we've got there. Um, I've really got to sort of, I tell you what, I'm awful for this. Keeping my drill bits together, I am a nightmare for that. I mean, I see a lot of guys on Instagram seem to sort of spend more time keeping their van clean than uh, actually doing any work. Literally, I do not subscribe. Uh, my van is a tool, and also it's battered, my van is. It's probably the biggest tool I have, but it's battered. I don't have any sign writing on there. I always leave loads of like toilet roll and stuff like that in the front of the cab. Um, and that tends to mean touch wood. So far, uh, my van, this particular van's not been broken into. Uh, I did have a Vauxhall combo that got broken, broken into, but let's face it, you just hit the side of one of them and the doors just fly open. So that's one of them things. Other like smaller random bits as well. This brilliant torch, this thing is amazing. Uh, really good for servicing. Um, and you can just hang it the good thing is I like, you can hang it on stuff like that. It's got this, so if you're, if this is the boiler, for example, and you want to service and look over the top, you can have that like that. But obviously it's just a really, really handy uh, torch. Batteries last absolutely ages on this. And the lubricant. Also, I have my jigsaw. Um, I mean, this is not going to be as powerful as what you get as a 240 volt jigsaw, but when you're up in a loft or you're doing some minor bits of woodwork, uh, that little jigsaw there pretty much does this job for me. Um, always has really good blades on there as well. I tend to get Bosch blades. I like Bosch's wood blades. I know the uh, protective guard's gone, but that's because I smashed it off by accident. Uh, it's a tool, guys, you know, come on. There we go, look, we're arranging them just like they are in the back of the van when I've thrown them in on Friday afternoon. Don't we? Yeah. Also, if I'm wrecking a reciprocating saw, uh, I don't know where all my batteries are. I think I've left some on site. I'm a bit worried about that because if I do, they tend to go missing. Uh, reciprocating saw, these things are great for everything. Literally, I'll use that to cut roots out if I'm digging like an oil line. Uh, you just get this in there, just like <laughs> boom, end of the root, goodbye nurse. Uh, good night nurse, Mrs. Root. Also, it's really handy just for wrecking out uh, old bits of wool, studding, stuff like that. I mean, a good blade on one of them will last for ages and that will cut round corners. The blades are so bendy, you can really sort of, once you get used to using one of these, you can really mangle up stuff quite nicely. So it's a good tool, that one, I really like it. And then this is, oh, this tool, this tool. If you don't get anything else, if you don't buy another tool, like outside of everything else as a plumber, get yourself a battery uh, circular saw, okay? Or a chop saw, whatever you want to call it, a drop saw. Uh, people have different names for them. I mean, they're very handy. You can cut 45s of them nicely. Loosen this off, boom, you've got a 45 there. Um, back up. You can easily adjust the depths on these as well by just loosening that off, bring that down, bring that up. It's sometimes a bit of a pain if you've got a nice sort of shallow cut to do because it can move side to side. But this tool, I, I don't, if I think I didn't have this, the amount of time I've saved just by having that, cutting floorboards up, everything, this is a must. If you haven't got one in your van, uh, what have you been doing? Just get one. Uh, also got my actual charging station, which has got a battery on it, thank God. Um, I always have a double charging station, they're really good. You can have different songs on each one as well for when the battery's charged up. Also, it's got a handy little USB port in the front as well, so it's good for charging your phone up. Um, and yeah, just a really nice, just having one that's got two ports on it makes so much difference. You know, you're charging two batteries up instead of one. I mean, <laughs> so it's better. Got a feeling that is all my battery gear. You're gonna ask why I haven't got certain tools as battery and I'll tell you why in a minute. Number one, the biggest one, let's just go to it now, is my oscillating saw or, you know, it's a, it's a saw that very, very quickly does that motion. That is all it does. But when you've got a really good bit on it and I tell you now, these bits, spend good money on these bits, all right? I used to have a feign one, but I found changing the, blades over on them took ages because you had to have a four mil allen key and it was just like mate really uh, what i really like about the dewalt one is you just pull this trigger it pulls that back and you can just slot this down in there and now you're ready to go so it's a really quick changeover but also i found that for some reason the batteries on these if you've got a battery one don't tend to last so well i haven't tried the makita one out yet funny enough you think i would wouldn't you i think this one might have been on offer somewhere and i've had it for ages and i know i've got to plug it in and all that sort of stuff but i like it it does the job for me another thing i like about it is you can lock in the on bit so it will just go like that and go absolutely crackers 
Um, well, let's turn it on. We can plug the baby in, can't we? You know. So, uh, and they'll they'll chew through anything. You know. Look. I mean, uh, that's making quick work of the bench there. Do you know what I mean? Um, the good thing is, is you can pull this trigger in and then lock it in like this. And now that's like. Uh, actually, how can I forget as well? Obviously, my radio come step up beast. It's got a little plug at the front. Now, obviously, I've got a new iPhone, so I've got to get that converter bit on there. Uh, they've probably bought another one out. I don't know why people buy the white version of this radio. I always think it looks really crap. Uh, and that's got another battery in there. <laughs> so I'm finding them slowly at the moment. Um, I have actually got a few of these radios because I just think they're brilliant. I have my own um, and I use them for loads of stuff. I mean, you've seen in the video I probably did probably like eight years ago. I'm still using the same radios as I was using back then. I don't, you know, I don't recommend anything that I don't use like on a daily basis. So yeah, still going strong that beast. Right, so now I'm going to move over to the 240 volt stuff and I actually also have one drill that is 110 volt uh, which is my Corbett drill or as I call it my Jeremy Corbett oh my god that would get political don't we <laughs> I just have my SDS drill here use it every day um, this thing and it gets used for things it shouldn't get used for this just gets battered but I mean the body of one of these isn't a great deal of money um, and it doesn't owe me a penny this thing uh, yet again just takes a standard 18 volt with a star drill on there and then boom you're ready to drill away these will quite happily drive in you know 35 mil plus drill bits uh, just a really handy bit of kit the one thing i wish it had on it that it doesn't have is a clip so you can just clip it on and i don't think they do have a position for it but it's not a very good position it should be on the side here so then when you're finished using it and you're up on a pair of steps or something you can hang it in a holster and then burn your leg on the hot drill bit yes one that I don't use a great deal, this one, but I still have it. Oh yeah, that was a battery one. So that, that was the last battery one. Um, so the end, I've got my circular saw. I mainly use this one actually at home. This is like chopping up bits of angle iron when I'm doing welding. I do a lot of welding at home. I like making like little barbecues and stuff like that out of the bits I find when I'm at work. Um, especially do it if I find like an old accumulator. You can make a really good fire pit out of an accumulator. Just sort of cut, cut it off. A um, little bit of welding and a couple of ideas later and you've got a, a really nice little barbecue bit or, or something like that. Um, that's why you'd always find, I don't tend to have grinding wheels on here. I usually have cutting wheels because of that. But of course I do have uh, a standard masonry grinding wheel and then an actual sort of grinding down metal wheel on there as well. Um, so they'll always be in there. And, uh, and I guarantee I'll run out of it. I've lost the tightening arm on it already as well because I'm bloody stupid. I have to use a set of grips to uh, undo that one now, uh, which is one of those things, but you know, it's a lie. So we just put that one out? We're going to put that out, aren't we? Right, now, this is one of my favourite tools. I used to have a smaller version of it, and then I went and bought this bigger version when I was doing a lot of timber frame first fixing. I'm drilling, drilling, drilling holes in the dust for you to watch. Um, and that sort of thing, where you're just literally punching holes through timber all the time. You've seen me use this in loads of videos as well and it is my trusty big fat beast angle drill. Um, you couldn't have one of these on a battery unless you had like a double battery one um, and it's just unfeasible. So this is my, well, m one of my favourite tools. Let me just put this down here and undo it. Obviously angle drill, you've got a very small area. Uh, I tend to try and use mini bits like this. Anything that's below a gap of say 360 mil to 400 mil, and that's going to get you into the space you need to get into, and then you can drill over into the bit of timber. Um, the good thing about these as well is you can just whip these two out and change it onto a different speed setting and torque setting. I tend to have it on low all the time. Um, it does have a clutch in it, but if it catches, you know, you can basically take your face off, which can be a bit of a bummer. Has a standard old school chuck on here as well not the tighten up twisty click one. This is a proper chuck and the chuck is here. Apprentices, take note of this. The chuck is hanging on this, not like laying somewhere else. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite tool. I love it. Good thing as well about undoing these is you can spin this head around in different directions just in case you can't get the handle in. Um, if you are going to go out there, if you're going to be a professional plumber, you're going to go and do this for a living, get one of these. It's as important as having that um, circular saw there that um, masonry drill there and that impact driver 
and, and the other drill as well. I mean, but this is indispensable. It's got me out of so much trouble and it is an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. I love it. That brings me on to my 110 volt Corbett drill. So my Jeremy Corbett drill. Uh, this particular drill does have two speeds. It's got a sketchy clutch, um, but I love it. It does what I want for it. You've got a speed adjustment just down here that, um, but really, I mean, this can go really quick, this drill can. I always leave it on one. Um, you can have a hammer set, you can have a hammer on it. Uh, and you've got another sort of speed area there. Always leave that on one as well. An old school type chuck on here as well. I've had this drill for 10, 20 years. I've got, I must have done. Um, and it has drilled many bloody Corbits. And what we're talking about, when we're talking about a Corbit, if you don't know, <laughs> I've actually got it written on it. <laughs> um, what, when I'm talking about a talk Corbit, when I'm talking about Corbett, that's what I'm talking about. And that's why it says Jeremy on it, because it's Jeremy Corbett. This has actually lost one of its teeth. Um, I've pretty much got to get a new set of these. You're using this tool just for these. You're not using this tool to do any other work, um, unless, unless you've got a drill bit hole that the STS can't handle, and you want a bit of 110 behind it. Um, that's when you'll use it again. But this, I effectively have it as my Corbett drill. Right, I've got some miscellaneous bits and bobs here for you now. Uh, and it is a bit of a cheapy make, a Titan, but this is very handy. You've seen me use this in a few videos. Um, this is a, a chasing grinder, I suppose you'd say. Um, it's handy for two reasons. Number one, it can grind a chase, which is where we grind two strips, like railway tracks down a wall, and then chip that out. Um, and also it can extract the dust through this hole here if you've got it connected to a hoover, which is another power tool that you need and I've got a Henry and he's just down there and I've got a Charles as well, a wet vac, who always falls over in the van. This has got a nice little sort of setup on it so you can undo this and then you've got a, an adjustment so you can set how deep you want your chase to be. Uh, on this it's a maximum of zero, five mil, all the way up to 40 millimeter deep chase. You don't get dust everywhere in the customer's house if you're chasing out a wall and you've got less chance of breathing in all the horrible dust that comes off the wall when you're actually doing that chase. Even though obviously I still recommend that you use a you know mask or and obviously goggles and gloves as well while you're using any of these bits of kit really. And the other miscellaneous piece of kit as well is, and this thing is brilliant, a little air compressor. Always have a little air compressor on the van. Um, they're handy for I mean, obviously, if you've got a bit of a puncture or something like that, slow puncture, they're really good. They're also very handy at pressure testing systems. If I'm doing a brand new house system, I'll tend to pressure test with air more than I will water, because then if you've got a leak, it doesn't ruin any of the new fabric of the house. Um, but one thing that people tend to do that's a bit wrong is they'll pressure test to like seven or eight bar. Uh, this, is, this can do a maximum of eight bar, and that would take quite a while to pump up actually in a system. I don't tend to pressure test that high. I'll pressure test like three bar pretty much. Then I'll go around with a leak detector spray and just spray on my joints. And that is the way I'll do that. That's why these are really handy for it. Um, another thing as well is they're good for recharging vessels. So if you've got a pressure vessel that might have lost its charge naturally through the Schrader valve and not through a buggered up diaphragm, then you can use one of these to repressurize that and get that all working. And there you go, guys. These are pretty much the tools that I use on a daily basis. These are always in the van. Uh, all the batteries are always charged up, ready to go. Obviously the radio one is, that's the most important. Um, and you know, they're ones that I use. These aren't brand new tools. These are all tools that I've had for ages and ages and ages and ages. And I've used daily for years. They've fallen off scaffolds. They've fallen out of lofts. They've fallen out of the van. They've been used as hammers. They have been used and abused and they're still going today. So I can't really say, I'm not, I'm not recommending them. I'm not saying this is what you should go out and get. I'm just telling you that I've used these loads. They've done everything that I've wanted them to do and they haven't broken. Thanks very much for watching right to the end, guys. Like I said, most of the tools that have been featured in this video and also all the little drill bits and bobs like that have been added to my Amazon store. So if you want to pop over there and have a look, spend some money willy-nilly on Amazon story stuff. So yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. We've got 300 videos on plumbing at the moment. Uh, there's also going to be links turning up in a minute for my vlog channel. There's going to be some new videos going up there soon about my life outside of plumber parts and outside of plumbing. Uh, where you can watch me learn to fly, you can watch me travel around the world and learn about history. I love history and stuff like that. So definitely check that out as well. So click on those links. Please comment below. Please like and please subscribe. See you soon, guys. And remember, if there's one thing you've got to do, I think you know what it is. That's hold tap. See you later.